great. Now you're set to go. You yeah, all ready? Yeah. Camera guys, take your time guys, don't rush, it's all good. You just tell us when you're ready. You're good. Good in the middle. Hey Bernard, how are you mate? Good, all right, all good to go? Hey, well look, firstly can I just say good afternoon and thanks for coming out to East Tamaki here. Um, I'm pleased to be here with my good friend and National Party's uh, Transport Spokesperson, Simeon Brown. I thought what I'd do is just pass a few quick remarks and then I'll pass over to Simeon and then let's take questions uh, after that if that's okay. Uh, we're here in True Good Drive, which is uh, here in East Tamaki, and it's very similar and, you know, to a lot of roads we see across New Zealand that are actually peppered with potholes. And everywhere I go up and down this great country of ours, I can see that people are incredibly frustrated by the state of our state highways and also our local roads. And they're frustrated because roading is so important to us here in New Zealand. It's how we connect economically and also socially, uh, and people are finding that incredibly frustrating as they see destruction and disruption to freight and to motor uh, and damage their cars uh, as they are navigating a lot of potholes across the country. In fact, in 2022, there was 54,000 potholes that needed repair on our state highways across New Zealand, and that is the highest number we've seen in over 10 years. In Auckland here, there is a backlog of over 1,000 kilometres of needed local road repairs. So today I'm very pleased to announce that National will establish a National Pothole Repair Fund to urgently address the shocking state of our local roads and our state highways. And there are three components to this announcement. The first is that National will establish the National Pothole Repair Fund which will see an additional $500 million over three years allocated to local authorities and to the NZTA to address potholes and other damage to both local roads and state highways. And just to stress, that is in addition to the existing repairs and maintenance budgets that already exist. Secondly, National will introduce a new directive to, and requirement to NZTA to undertake renewal and rehabilitation work on at least 2% of our roading network each and every year, and that is more than double the current rate. And then finally, National will also introduce a new rules for pothole repair on state highways, including that the standard response time for pothole repair will be removed from 48 hours down to 24 hours on the state highway network. And so in our view, rather than wasting money on slowing people down, rather than wasting money on giant red zeros uh, or expensive transport projects that nobody wants, like light rail at $30 billion, National is going to focus on fixing and enhancing our roading network. It's an investment in our future. Whether we're in EVs or hydrogen trucks, we need excellent roads. Uh, it's our critical part of our infrastructure in this great country of ours. And so with that, uh, we want to make sure that we invest in New Zealand to get better roads that drive higher levels of safety and more convenience for New Zealanders to get around their business. It's part of what we're doing to get New Zealand back on track. And with that, happy to talk to some of you. Not much to pass a few more remarks. Oh, well, thank you so much, Tristan. Great to have you all here today. Um, the message is very clear that National is going to fix our roads here in New Zealand. Uh, this fund will be available to NZTA for our state highways as well as councils for local roads. It's critically important that we have well maintained roads to improve the safety of our roading network and so this fund will be allocated over three years so that NZTA and our local councils can do just that. Happy to take any questions. Yeah. How much money will cancelling the speed reduction save? <coughs> well, look, the uh, NZTA was allocating about 50 million bucks this year in uh, the New Zealand Land Transport Program. Uh, there's another 100 or 200 million dollars they allocated to much minor improvements, which is often speed bumps. Uh, what we're saying is those minor improvements and slowing people down is actually a lower priority than actually fixing our roads to make sure they're safe to drive in in the first place. So those speed bumps, will you hold the installation completely and how much will that save you? Well, we're not opposed to installations of speed bumps, but what we're saying is we're seeing them now being installed on state highways, $7 million worth on State Highway 2 in the Wairarapa uh, for 21 speed bumps. That's a lot of money to slow that state highway down. Uh, we're seeing them installed here on Te Rakao Drive in coming years. We're saying that's a lower priority than uh, improving the quality of our roads 
and so we want to actually prioritise that money towards the fixing our roads, fixing potholes, so they're safe to drive on in the first place. And this Lexington, at the moment, they're not fixing potholes within 48 hours. What makes you think you can do it within 24? Well, we're making a really serious commitment here. We know how important the roads are for New Zealanders to get around and do their daily business. Uh, I, I think about you know people like vets that I've met that use our roading network, and when they experience a new and improved roads like the Waikato Expressway, that enables us, we're talking to a wonderful young vet, she could do two more jobs a day because she could jump on and off the Waikato Expressway and visit more farms through the day in a much faster way uh, and equally she'd get home to her two little girls at the end of the night as well and so you know good infrastructure has economic benefits but it also has great social benefits and all New Zealanders can recognise that under this government our roading network has been run down uh, and as Simeon says we want to be able to prioritise investing in our roading network so we can improve the safety outcomes but also importantly uh, make sure that we get people conveniently being able to get around their job their day and, and get around their business. What's your what will this look like? Well, we'll be issuing a new government policy statement uh, in our first six months in office, and part of that will be a new directive around what we expect as a, as a national government around the speed of repair for our roads, but also the amount of road that needs to be uh, rebuilt every single year. Last year, uh, NZTA only rebuilt 0.5% of the roading network. That should be 2% on average per year. And so this funding will help them address that, uh, but it also sends a very clear message as to what the priority of their investment has to be. How, how much does NZTA currently spend on road maintenance? So they get allocated an activity class uh, with about seven, eight hundred million dollars per year for road maintenance. Uh, that goes into a whole range of things, including signage, property maintenance, traffic operations. What we're saying, and, and of course, resealing and rehabilitation. What we're saying is this will be solely focused on making sure we're rehabilitating our state highways and fixing potholes, and we'll be focusing all of that money into that core purpose. Well, it works out about $170 million a year. Is that going to do the job? Well, that'll be uh, a significant increase on top of what they're already allocating to rehabilitation. Uh, they allocate, I think it's about just under $200 million every year to rehabilitation. Uh, so there'll be a significant increase uh, on that particular focus within the State Highway Maintenance Budget. Are you confident that that's enough money to do the job? Well look, we're confident this is going to make a big difference. We need to get up to those long-term averages of 2% being rebuilt every single year. This is going to help uh, get a long way there. Uh, $500 million will rebuild uh, approximately 1,500 kilometres of road at a price of about $330,000 a kilometre. Uh, so we think that's a significant change and a significant step in the right direction uh, and we're saying we're committed to making that difference. You don't sound very confident in that target. We're, we're, we're setting a very clear directive to NZTA and we're very confident that under a new direction where we say that fixing the roads is the number one priority mm. that we will meet and address that and Chris Luxon has been very clear that this is a government which will be of delivery and setting targets and expecting agencies and departments to deliver upon the loop. And where's the money going to come from? What we're talking about <laughs> well, what we've said is we're going to reallocate some of the money within the Road to Zero activity class, which is focused on slowing people down or making uh, driving less, in, less convenient, such as uh, the significant increase in speed bumps, raised platform crossings that we're seeing, particularly on high-trafficked streets. So we're going to reallocate some of that money towards road maintenance and actually making sure our roads are safe to drive in in the first place. So it's all going to come within what oh, NZTA's existing budget, you're just going to reprioritise spending? That is correct. What Kotaki have said in the past three years, their budget for this kind of thing is up by about 30%. Is, is money for the problem really the issue? Well look, money is part of the problem in that we need to invest more in our roads. Uh, and this government's uh, spent the last six years talking about light rail rather than roads. But the other part of it is actually making sure that they're focused on the outcomes which matter. They currently do not have a target on what percentage of the road needs to be re rebuilt every single year. There's just no target. So we're going to be sending a very clear directive as to what our expectation is and what they must deliver.
Slatson, what do you make of Labour's new slogan in it for you? Um, well, look, I, I don't think actually New Zealand needs slogans. I think what New Zealand needs is real substantive answers to its challenges and its problems. Uh, we have a fantastic country filled with endless potential, but we're not realising that potential. We're not solving problems like we're talking about here today, uh, and we're also not maximising opportunities. You know, they can announce slogans. Well, this is our 26th policy announcement that we've announced about how we think we can take New Zealand forward and get it back on track. So National's not going to have a slogan this week? Is that what you say? Oh, our slogan will be get our country back on track, uh, and that's really what we're been talking about for some time now and say with our policies and this is a good example of this you know this is you know if you think about what's happened with NZTA you know they've hired a thousand extra staff over the last uh, six years under this government if you think about Ministry of Transport they've hired another 90 extra staff and yet actually safety outcomes haven't improved our roading network has deteriorated and so what we're focused on is let's define the problem really well and then let's put common sense practical policies to deal with those problems and that's so what you're seeing from us you've just confirmed that National does have a slogan. Our slogan, election slogan will be get our country back on track. Uh, but the slogans are not what New Zealanders need right now. What they need is substance. And what they need is a, country, a government that will actually fix the economy and lower the cost of living. They need, to, they need a government that will restore law and order. And they need one that will deliver better health and education. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're going to do. Are there enough hands or, or enough resources to complete this work? Yes, absolutely. I mean, there is. I mean, there is resources, as I just alluded to, in terms of there have been a massive increase in staffing. Uh, we've, we're we're reprioritising the budget to say let's stop the stuff that's not working, and let's put the things that are working and put more weight behind it. Uh, when it costs three hundred and thirty thousand dollars often to do a single speed bump, and as Simeon just outlined, that's the same cost it takes to, to repave a kilometre of roading. Uh, that seems like a much better investment uh, for us in a prioritisation. So, what are you taking out of the budget? And Yes, I'll just talk, talk to that. Yep. <clears throat> so what we're saying is we're going to put an end to Labor's blanket speed limit reductions, which are costing tens of millions of dollars per year, and we're going to reallocate some of the money which is currently going towards um, excessive in speed limit uh, speed pumps and speed calming devices and put that into road maintenance and improving the state of our roads instead. Have you guys already talked to local councils about this? Certainly. Well, the number one issue that local councils up and down our country say to me is that they need more funding to make sure they can invest in the quality of their roads. Yeah. Uh, they haven't been getting the funding they need from the, the government, um, and that's why this pothole repair fund is not just focused on supporting NZTA, but also on supporting our local councils. Just ask you a couple of questions sure. about tax. Um, is the top threshold 28% realistic? Uh, sorry, in what regard? Just in, in regards to, to ACT, um, if you are forming a government with them, uh, which of their policies would you absolutely... Oh, look, I'm, I'm not focused on ACT. Uh, I'm focused on the National Party, and what we've said very clearly is the unfairness in our tax system is that working New Zealanders are not getting any tax relief. Uh, and while you know that, that we would just want to simply inflation adjust tax thresholds and give the average worker almost a thousand dollars back in their own pocket to spend and, and save as they see fit, we think that's the most prudent thing that we can do in order to actually manage the cost of living uh, and get. And more importantly, it's about getting to the underlying causes of what's driving inflation, so that New Zealanders actually can keep more of their own money in their own pocket and get ahead. Is there any tension between you and ACT on tax? Uh, look, I'm not. I'm not. I'm just not focused on that. What I'm focused on is making sure that the National Party uh, is very clear about how we will fund tax uh, relief, as we've talked about, and our focus is actually making sure we inflation adjust tax thresholds so that New Zealanders aren't being penalised when they get thrown into higher tax brackets uh, when they don't need to uh, in a high inflation environment. But is that 28% realistic? Uh, again, I, our tax policy is really clear and that's what we'll go to the election with is, is the National Party tax policy. Yeah, just a couple here. Um, would you abolish the Bright Line test? Uh, we've said very clearly we'll move the Bright Line test from 10 years back to two. And would you abolish the income insurance scheme? Uh, absolutely. It's a cost on business that is uh, only leading to higher prices and more inflation. Likewise, we will abolish our fair pay awards uh, because we don't think they're fair and they're adding a huge amount of cost to businesses and that leads to higher prices and more inflation as well. You know, we have a good plan which we've now talked about for 18 months about how to deal with inflation in this economy. This is something we haven't seen for over 35 years, but history and the principles of economics tell us what we need to do. Stop passing costs through to businesses that lead to higher prices. Free up our businesses with removing red tape and open up immigration settings, go through the 80% increase in government spending to $137 billion, line item by line item, and make sure we're getting value from it, and give New Zealanders tax relief uh, as our focus. And I just want to point that out. You know, this is a government that has increased government spending 80% to $137 billion. 
it spends a billion dollars, which is a thousand million dollars extra over and above what it does used to spend each and every week on government spending. We were the second highest per capita spenders of government spending in the world. And the consequence that every New Zealander has to ask themselves is, have we had an 80% improvement in infrastructure or in roading or in education, an 80% improvement in healthcare, an 80% improvement in law and order in this country, or an 80% improvement in our economy? And the short answer is no. This is a unique government that has managed to spend more, hire more and deliver worse outcomes on everything. The Prime Minister has said that his growing up in the lower hut has grounded him in the reality of the working class Kiwi. What, what's your reaction to that? Um, well, that's, that's very nice of him, uh, but the bottom line is we all have different experiences. I've grown up with parents who left school at 15, 16, uh, young parents, the oldest of three boys, uh, first ever in my family to go to university, and I had a great New Zealand education that actually set me off to do well in the world. And so, uh, you know, that's my motivation for being in politics coming here two years ago, is I want every Kiwi kid to have their shot and to be able to get from a set of circumstances to a better set of circumstances like I was able to, uh, and that's, what, that's why I'm here, and that's why I want to improve New Zealand, because we can be so, so much better than this. Across the board, politicians are sort of relatively high owners. How is it that you then sort of empathise and, and relate to those working class Kiwis? Well, as I said, I had a very regular Kiwi upbringing and I'm very connected to that and I talk to New Zealanders each and every day about their issues. You know, in the last few weeks I've met parents that are skipping meals because they can't afford food. I've met families actually on good, with, with it, you know, good jobs and average incomes that are in food banks like never before. I've sat in on budgeting sessions as families are actually at risk of losing their homes because interest rates have moved from moved up four points and they had to find $750 a fortnight out of their finances to pay just for the, the mortgage payment. So I understand exactly what's going on in this country. Half of New Zealanders worry about money on a daily basis. 430,000 of us are now behind on our debt payments. That's why we're here and that's why if you care about New Zealanders and if you care about people, you run a good economy. It's not just about dollars and cents and economics, it's about people is what economic management is about. And that's what we're here to do, and that's what I'm here to do, is to make sure we run a really good economy, we manage it well, so that actually we can afford the public services like education and health, we will spend more on each and every year under my government, so that New Zealanders can get ahead. We want every Kiwi kid flourishing and realising their dream. Hipkins said in his releasing, Christopher Luxon's unaffordable tax cuts to the rich will make inflation worse and drive up the cost of living. No disrespect, but I'm not taking any economic lecturing from Chris Hipkins, for goodness sake. I mean, this is a government that has run New Zealand's economy into the ground over the last six years. This is a Prime Minister who's been in power for now for six months and just all of a sudden last week decides to unilaterally rule out wealth tax. Clearly part of his Labour Party mission, clearly his coalition partners with the Greens and also with the Party Māori are very much on the cards and be under no illusions. This is the same government that said it would rule out um, a number of taxes and end up implementing them. And so be under no illusion, the coalition of chaos, Labour will bend to the Greens and to Party Māori on the other side of election if they win uh, and there will be a wealth tax here in New Zealand. So no disrespect, Chris Hipkins doesn't understand the economy uh, and as he's seen with Grant Robertson, we've had a failed finance minister for the last six years. New Zealand needs proper economic management and that's what we'll bring on October the 14th. Okay, I say you. thank you so much, guys. Really appreciate your time. Thanks for coming out. Thank you. Are you able to take us over and show us one of the potholes that you're talking about? Okay, now let's, let's be okay? careful, eh? Yeah, I don't want you getting killed. <laughs> oh, exactly. <laughs> on the, the cars. Exactly. Um,